about that, Mr. Feeder. Okay, so this chapter, like I said, guys, talk about a few things that you need to know about feeders. Uh, let me get my pointer here. Great. Um, for the project that we did, um, Adam, we have a service entrance conductor coming, which was five, 500 amp, 28, 123 fares. And then from there, we took 200 amp, I believe it was a 200 amp um, feeder to feed the lighting panel and 100 amp to feed the receptacle panel. Do you guys remember that? So let's take a few things about feeders. Um, calculating the load for the feeders, this is a review for you. You guys have done it with me. Uh, doing calculation for the feeders and how to come up with the size of the feeders. We give you guys an ex You have developed a great Excel sheet that does the calculation for feeders as well as service in this conductor. After we calculate the feeders, guys, we go and we size the overconfection device. Here's my feeder. Um, this is my feeder up. We need to overcurrent protection device size. And you guys have done a great job sizing this one with me as well. Um, and then from the calculation, you size the feeder as well as, of course, the conductors as well as the overcomputation device. That's what we'll talk about today. Um, there's something correction and adjustment factors. So, Adam, after you size your feeder and you came up with a um, um, 100 amp feeder, and you need to go find a conductor number three or, or what's not to size for this feeder, you're going to ask yourself, do I need to durate because of temperature or durate because of um, uh, of bonding? So f typically feeders, we don't bundle them. So after you do your calculation, and before you guys did not do this one with me because we did not bundle the feeders, there is no temperature issues. So what you did, Adam, you took the 100 amp and you went, you sized your conductors to 100 amp as well as your overconfliction device. But if you are to have a higher temperature or more feeders in one conduit, which highly unlikely, more feeders in one conduit, you have to pay attention to the uh, derating. There's something called voltage drop problem, guys, in feeders. Feeders is the most important thing that could force you to go to a higher size conductor is the problem of voltage drop. Feeders tend to be 50, 100, 200 feet away from the source. With this, guys, we'll get you a voltage drop uh, problem. So we'll talk a little bit about that one. Re reduction in the neutral. You guys have done a lot of reduction in neutral for your friend Chad. And we said if your conductor is like 200 higher than 200 amp, you cut it by 70% and what's not. And after you size your conductors based on based on the actual load atom, based on voltage drop, based on bundling and um, and derating, you you find your conductors. Then you have to go find the raceway PVC if you're going underground and rigid uh, if it's hazardous location and EMT everywhere else, everywhere else. Any comments, guys? Any questions about what we're trying to maneuver here? Trying to few, say a few things about the feeders. In the NEC code book, guys, the feeders are covered in Article 215. 215 talks about the feeders. <clears throat> very, very important thing. You guys have done that one with me. The ambiguity of conductors must not not less than the sum of the volt amps of all the conductors that fit from that feeder. So that's co it goes without discussion. First, you find the load on the feeder, and then you size the conductors. <laughs> so that's what this tells you. Um, you can apply demand factors when it comes to the feeders um, allowed in selected cases. For example, do you guys remember the ranges? If you have multiple ranges in that apartment building, when we did the apartment building, you can apply a demand factor, meaning you can cut the load lower because of the likelihood that these loads will be energized simultaneously. Um, if you have non-coincidental loads, do you guys remember that heating and cooling? If you have non-coincidental loads, if you guys remember, we, we pick the largest of the heat and cool. That's what this is telling you when it comes to the feeder. In neutral feeders, most a lot of time, guys, we end up reducing the neutral feeders. Notoriously famous at 70% of 200 amp or higher. And you guys have done an awesome job in your load calculation, if you remember, Adam, in, in, um, in, in calculating your neutral. So typically, when you have a neutral on a feeder, especially on a feeder, guys, Almost always, that neutral will be derated. Um, there's a situation where we don't derate this neutral if we have harmonic and what's not. Uh, Overcomputation device. When you size, so when you size your conductors, feeders, very simple. You take the non-coincident, co the non-continuous load, add them up, add 125% on the continuous load, add the total, and size your uh, feeders. 
The overcurrent protection device also, guys, that's going to be ahead of your feeder. This is called overcurrent protection device ahead of my feeder. We size this one based on non-continuous load and 125% of the continuous load. Um, if, you're, uh, if the overcompetition device does not match, you can go to the next standard up to 800 amp. You guys remember that rule? Up to 800 amp, your overcompetition device can be slightly higher. The amp of the fuse or circuit breaker can be slightly higher than the amp of the conductor up to 100 amp. After 800 amp, next project, you have to match the ambicity of the conductor to the overcompetition device for feeders. Uh, there's a few things about temperature limitation, guys. Um, when you put the conductors, I have a couple of pictures. We'll talk about um, sizing. If you guys, if you, uh, Karen, if you remember, we talked about the 60 degree terminals versus 75 versus 90 degree cables and terminals. I have a picture I'm going to show you. Okay, requirement, feeder requirement. Um, the, when you start sizing a feeder, the first thing you need to do, which you guys have done that, is you have to identify the material, the wire material. Are we going copper or are we going aluminum? Uh, copper guys are preferred by engineers. Aluminum are preferred by contractors because aluminum are cheaper, easier, lighter to work with. Uh, copper are safer because they don't, uh, when it comes to insulation, they're safer than, um, than aluminum. Um, so copper, like I said, copper, if you're working on an engineering project, most likely copper will have a higher ambicity rating. It's easier to, it's uh, it's safer in terms of uh, termination of what's not. Um, a lot of people get select also aluminum for feeders because cheaper installation. Um, and if you treat the aluminum, if you treat the aluminum feeders right, you maintain them properly, and you um, you solve the problem of oxidation and you torque them on a regular basis. Every say two three years, you can go shut down the system, go retorque these cables lugs you will get a good performance of aluminum cable. If you let them sit for 10 years, they will, um, they, they expand and contract at different rates, um, at the higher rate, guys. So what happens if you have a conductor that expands and it contracts at a higher rate under a lug, right? It's going to get loose. And what happens if you have a loose conductor that's carrying uh, 500 amp? It's going to arc. So uh, aluminum conductor, utilities use them all the time. Aluminum conductors, if they are maintained properly, they will live forever. Okay, um, wire selection. So the first, like I said, um, every time you have to connect listed connectors, every time you have to join a copper and aluminum. Um, I know you guys are electricians, but you will be a project manager, Karen, at one time, and you will have a feeder that's four out aluminum. You need to extend it with the, with three out copper, um, and you need to tie the two together. Right, you cannot tie aluminum to cover unless you have a special connector. What they do, guys, is they put the aluminum in one side and the cover in the other side of the connector, and they don't touch each other. And that connector is rated to connect the two systems together because of oxidation and what's not an expansion rate. Um, common problem associated with aluminum. That's that's why a lot of engineers don't do them. Um, corrosion action. If you have moisture. Or, or or highly corrosive environment, you have corrosion action in the road. Um, so what they do, you have to brush inhibitor onto the conductor to prevent oxidation. So they have um, they have what they call the inhibitor. They put them on the logs, the material there that will minimize the oxidation of these conductors if not eliminate them. So they have to treat the aluminum a little bit more. But what's the advantage of aluminum, Derek? They're light, light conductors, cheaper to install. Um, that's why contractors like them, especially on feeders. When you have a 500 kcm or a 4 out or, or 250, it will be cheaper to install on them. If you work in engineering, in engineering firms, a lot of engineers prefer copper. Prefer copper. Um, Aluminum also problem with this guys expand and contract at a greater rate. I talked about this one. Brian, your Excel Energy that you work for, those guys, they use uh, aluminum all the time. Um, so what they do is they have compression connectors, guys. They put them, if you go to the, to the distribution systems coming to your house, they have that compression connector that takes the aluminum and grab it. There is no set of screws of not, not, and it holds it really good. Um, so anyway, but they do expand and contract at a higher rate. So if you put them under a set of screw log, um, you have to basically maintain them more often. So you have to do a maintenance program for them. 
more often than copper. Um, so when you select the parameters to select a feeder gas, which I have no doubt in my mind that you can do it, you have to know if it's continuous or non-continuous load. And uh, Karen, Article 220, I, uh, you guys have done two load calculation with me in Article 220, and guess what? Next project, you will be doing one more calculation for all the feeders in an industrial building. So that's the article that we use, guys, to size um, to size feeders as well as um, service entrance conductors. <clears throat> Uh, uh, 310.04, 104 guys will give you that you use THHN slash THW insulation. So if you're outdoor, I hope you don't graduate from down you're not knowing that you, if you're outdoor, you have to use a conductor in wet location rated for wet location. If you're indoor, the conductor or dry location, you can use a conductor that rated for wet or dry location. So that's very, very important. Um, when it comes to the feeder, as well as the branch circuit, guys, the ambient temperature, as well as how many carrying, carrying conductor you put in the cable, will dictate a higher size of conductor. So let me just simplify it. So, Karen, if you're using feeder, 99.9% .9 of the time, you will never have more than three Karen Karen conductors. You don't, you really don't. Um, you don't put six Karen Karen conductors in a conduit. You don't do that for reliability, um, maintenance, and what's not. Typically, we do bundle for branch circuits. If you have a branch circuit, it's a good idea to bundle. If you have feeders, when we talk about feeders, guys, we start talking about 100 amp or more when you have a substantial feeder. So when you have 100 amp load, you really, for reliability reasons, it's a very good idea to put it in a dedicated conduit and not bundling with others. But if you are to do so, you have to pay attention to the bundling. Here's the steps of selecting a feeder, guys. You guys are familiar with that one first. Based on the calculation, you're going to come up with the overcome friction device. Then based on this one, you need to size the conductors, the phase conductors, so-called the phase conductors. Um, and from that one also, you have to take into consideration the type of the conductor, if it's uh, a copper, um, and the size of the conductor. These are all tied to the conductors. And of course, for your neutral, keep in mind that you can reduce uh, reduce your neutral in a lot of feeders. So take advantage of reduction of a neutral, reduction of a neutral. Any comments, any questions? It will be a crime, my friends, if you get out of here not knowing somebody give you a load and say, go size the feeder for it, and you have no idea how to do it. So I know I have no doubt that you guys will know because you've done it tw twice now with me, and you will be doing it one more time. Um, Derek, you talk about redemption. You have a lot of times to redeem yourself here. A lot of options to redeem yourself. Okay. There's something called harmonics. In a three-phase system, guys, especially 28120, harmonic is a big issue. So a lot of engineering firms, they like to pull full neutral. Look at this. For, they, they, look at this. This is, a, let's say this is a lighting panel, guys. And because of all the lights fit from here, have a ballast with them. I have my ballast here. And they are heavily in harmonics. A lot of engineers, sometimes you end up, if it's very heavy, you end up with a neutral that's twice as much as the phase. Um, this is called heavy harmonic loads. You will see this one in data centers, um, Matt. Data center is a term they use for a room like this or rooms full of computers that they're crunching numbers. Every time you watch you, Chad Care, the YouTube channel, um, you need to go pull the information from a server. That will be your data center. So if you have a data center heavily with electronic guys, the neutral literally will be carrying twice as much, could carry twice as much as the current. So they call it double neutral, double neutral. They use them a lot in um, in, uh, in, uh, in data centers. And Adam, you will be doing one of these guys with me next uh, next semester. So we'll have when we have a data center, I'm going to ask you if anybody will remember that. When you have a data center, guys, we have a panel in data center, we specify a double neutral. What is a double neutral? Um, you can see that neutral bar here. Your neutral bar here is rated for 200 amp, and your, your phase here is, is rated for 100 amp, and your neutral conductor is rated also for 200 amp versus the phase is rated for 100 amp. Why? Because harmonic, guys, adds up instead of cancel each other, so the neutral of a three-phase to it 
120 specialty system or uh, 48277. So can I get, can you guys give me a thumbs up before I leave this point that we know if we have a panel that feeds a server, only servers, not lights, only servers, um, we are going to be looking at the double neutral. Cool? Double neutral, double the amount of neutral. Other than that, guys, um, and also, so to solve the problem of harmonics, to solve the problem of harmonics, a lot of engineering, there's three ways of solving the problem of harmonic, guys, in a three-phase system. What they do is they pull, they pull a neutral with every phase. Here you go, here's phase A, and here's phase uh, B, and here's my phase C. These are the circuit breaker. Um, they don't have to be tied together. And can you guys see that they're pulling a neutral right here? And neutral is pulled from with each one of them. So they pull a neutral. And Adam, I think you asked me, um, if you guys read through the description of the project that we have, the technology receptacles that we have, if you read through the description, it says pull a separate neutral with them on the brand circuit. I know these are not feeders, on, these are brand circuits. On the brand circuit, to minimize the problem of harmonic, instead of having a common neutral multi wire brand circuit, the engineers specify a separate neutral with every circuit. Who cares? A separate neutral with every circuit will guarantee you that your neutral will not burn. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, if it's heavily, if the, if I have a heavy harmonic loads, like receptacle that feed the uh, uh, computers and electronic equipment, I will pull a separate neutral and I will not do a multi wire brand circuits. Cool? Brian, make sense? Okay. So keep this, uh, this is only if you have non-harmonic loads. Now what, what is a non-harmonic load, guys? These are, I call them the slobby eater. When they digest electricity, they digest it in a way where if it's coming from a three-phase system, it would not cancel itself when it goes to the neutral. So what does that mean? And instead of canceling each other's as they reach the neutral they actually add each other's up so who cares then the neutral will be overloaded so you can burn your neutral you can burn your neutral okay i'll show you guys a couple of pictures of nonlinear loads here's your nonlinear loads um so nonlinear loads what here's what i would like you to to do if you have 100% nonlinear load in a panel, like a server, a bunch of servers, guys. What the what the engineers will do will you hear them? Uh, who are said Bashad? Adam, you will hear them at Bashad Kuli saying double neutral. When they say double neutral, this means that neutral bars and conductor are actually twice as much as the phase. Double neutral. They use them for data centers again. Data centers. And also another another term that you're going to be using, guys, it's called K-rated transformer. Now, what the heck is a K-rated transformer? Harmonics, guys, have a tendency, you look at Chad's, if I'm a transformer, the harmonic have a tendency of sitting inside the transformer and cooking it, literally. They circulate inside the transformer and they create more heat. Cool? So now the smarter than Chad decide, what if we build a transformer that's strong enough that can handle and mitigate the, these harmonic um, so they call this transformer K-rated transformer. So if you have a transformer that feed a data center, the data center, heavily harmonic loads, electronics, please be, be aware that this harmonic, the transformer that feeds this load, is my transformer coming, XFR, coming all the way and feeding this panel. <clears throat> this is my data, my data panel uh, that feed all these servers right here. All my servers are coming out of that. This transformer will be a K-rated. What does that mean? It's capable of handling the harmonics, different type of harmonics, um, without basically burning um, or dying prematurely. So what they do is they candle the heat generated by the harmonic current. That generated by harmonic current. Any comments, any questions guys about the K-rated transformers? So when you have a harmonic problem in a building, a few things you need to do. Number one, you pull a neutral with every phase. You don't share neutrals, number one. Number two, you specify a K-rated transformers to feed these panels. Number three, you, you typically either put a full neutral, um, a full neutral or double neutral, double sized neutral. So these are the problems that can associate it with harmonic, associate it with harmonic. Any comments, guys? Any questions about harmonics? A lot of engineering firms, um, Derek, here's the rule of thumb. If you have a panel, lighting and receptacle panel, up to 225 amp panel, 
they put they fo full neutral four out four out four out so four conductors four out up to 225 amp panel higher than 225 amp panel they start derating the neutral by 70 percent based on the curve so why because it's highly unlikely adam if you go look at, um, at lighting panels most of lighting panels guys and receptacle panels they don't go higher than 225 amp anybody knows why you know if you want to have a thousand amp lighting panel you know what a thousand amp lighting panel is that will feed Dunwoody here, um, the lighting system at Dunwoody, and 10 buildings like Dunwoody. So it's a lot of amps to have a lighting panel, one lighting panel, 1,000 amps. So can I get you guys to understand that you start building your riser, when you have your receptacle panels, mat, and your lighting panels, especially receptacle on lighting, they almost always, you are sitting at 225 amp panel, 225 amp panel. If you need more, what do you do? You just add another panel. Can I get you guys to understand that one? So, and then you pull a full neutral with them. You don't derate the neutral up to 225 amp panel. So that will take care of your harmonics in lights, um, not heavily harmonic, just lights, harmonic, and harmonic that comes out of laptops that you plug into your receptacles. The last thing I want to talk about, guys, is the voltage drop. Voltage drop, believe it or not, is um, information note uh, for the feeders. Here's where they are for the feeders, and here's where they are for the brand circuits. The voltage drop, you have to do voltage drop checks, especially on feeders. If you have a calculator like your friend Chad right here, you can plug your feeder, guys, in this calculator and do the voltage drop calculation. Uh, we will be doing voltage drop calculation later on um, for this for the, uh, for this uh, project. So be aware that you have to do a voltage drop calculation, voltage drop calculation. Um, on your on your feeders. Here's what the code says, guys, about voltage drop. The voltage drop typically 3% on feeders and 2% uh, on brand circuits for a total of no more, a total of no more than five. Can I get you guys to understand that when we talked about this one, when it comes to voltage drop, the voltage drop no more than 5% total, 3% typically on the feeder, 2% on the brand circuits. That's the common practice. You can have them 2% on feeders and 3 on the brand circuits, but the common practice is 3 in feeder, on feeder, and 2 on um, um, and two percent on uh, on the brand circuit. So, for example, Adam, when you take your 120 um, volt right here, you take it from here, when it reaches this point right here, it will be uh, 0 0.95 <clears throat> times 120. That's the voltage that could reach to the light, and the light should uh, work properly. If it goes lower than that, your light might not start, and if it starts, might not work properly, your equipment uh, will malfunction and what's not. Any comments, guys, about voltage drop? Any comments about the voltage drop? So a lot of engineering firms, guys, they end up oversizing. If the if the feeder is 100, air, 100 feet or longer, you end up going up an extra size so if you need a, a four out you go 250 just go uh, one step uh, lower higher but the proper way to do it is to have the lay out your feeders the building that we have because have you noticed the building that we have where was the feeder we have a mid panel right here right and uh, some panels were right next to it do we have a voltage problem voltage drop problem no you know the main panel is right next to the feeders In, into into the feeder panels but if the main panel is here and the feeder panel is in the first floor, then you have to run a voltage drop calculation. Who cares? You almost always end up with an extra, a higher size conductor. If it's 2 out, 3 out, to accommodate for the voltage drop. Any comments, guys, about the voltage drop? Any comments about the voltage drop, especially on feeders? Why feeders, guys? Because feeders are long. Brand circuits tend to be... 40 feet, 50 feet, 60 feet or less. Feeders can go as high as 400 feet away from where panels located. So then what you do is you plug in these numbers in your calculator and you come up with typically a bigger size um, conductor. Any comments, any questions about the voltage drop? Comments, questions? We will do voltage drop calculation, guys. Um, the formula that we, they use that a lot of people use for voltage drop on single phase or three phase is voltage drop equal uh, two for single phase kill k i l over circular mill 
So the voltage drop K is a constant related to the cover or aluminum, typically 11 or 18 cover aluminum. I is the current, L is the length, and CM is a circular mill. So this is um, this is this number becomes 1.732, guys. If your voltage is three phase, can I get you guys to understand that's a formula that they use to find the voltage drop calculation? Another formula, Adam, they call it rel voltage drop equal to rel R I L over a thousand. Over a thousand. R is the resistor of the conductor. I is the current. L is the distance. Two because it's single phase. If it's a three phase system, this two becomes 1.732. These are the two formulas that we use to do voltage drop calculation. And guess what? This calculator that you just bought are awesome to do these two calculations in a, in, a, in, a, in a heartbeat. So we will do we will do voltage drop calculation, guys. But just be aware that these are the two formulas that you use for voltage drop calculation. Um, if you have a voltage drop um, um, problem, guys, it could be from um, Brian's company, Excel, is not giving you the right voltage. So the first thing you need to do is go check at the service, make sure you're getting 480 right at the service or higher. Because they could be screwing up the voltage coming to you. The utilities, guys, are obligated to provide you a nominal voltage. So if you're 480, typically they provide you 480 or higher. Then inside your building, you control it with your feeders. Then you have to have uh, um, methods to estimate the voltage drop, make sure the distances and what's not are ac accounted for. Okay, any comments, guys, any questions about voltage drop before I move into the parallel conductors? A few things about parallel conductors. Um, Karen, you parallel conductors with your friend Chad when you have a 500 uh, amp 208-123 phase service. When should we parallel conductors? I get this one from Dave uh, at uh, CA, CA Electric all the time. The contract. When what, what's when is the rule the best way to parallel conductor? The best way goes to parallel conductor if your load is 400 amps or higher. If your load is 400 amps or higher, it's a very good idea to parallel conductors. The code does not allow you to parallel this the one on AWG. Did you guys hear me? You cannot parallel list that one not. So everybody knows what parallel is. Parallel is when you take his phase A, his phase A here, and I need to connect them together. I can connect them with one wire, or two wires, or three wires, or four wires. In this case, these are four conductors connected to give you a phase A. Any comments, guys, about parallel? There's a few rules about parallel conductor, guys, um, that you have to adhere to. Um, rule number one, of course, you cannot parallel this that one not AWG. That's the most important thing. And uh, all your conductors, as you parallel them, must be the same length. That's number one. Um, um, same difference in length result. So the most important thing, they have to be the same length. If they have if you parallel conductor Brian and they have different length, guess what? The longest conductor will carry less amp than the shortest conductor, and some of them will burn, you know? So if I have two conductors, guys, look at this. I have two conductors. Each one of them is supposed to carry 200 amp, 200 amp for a total of what? 400 amps. If that one was 150 feet and that one was 100 feet, right, because of the run, so the 100 feet can carry, instead of carrying a 200 amp, it, it will be carrying 250 amp, and the guy hit, the one sitting next to it will be carrying 150. Who cares? You could burn one of these ones. So long story short, Adam, when you parallel conductor as a contractor, you know what they do? They pull, like I need 100 feet of 4 out. So they put 100 feet 4 out of 3 sets. They pull the three sets outside, cut them on both ends, and pull them. So make sure that they're exact, exactly the same. Um, and then they tie them at both ends. You always have to be a project manager. When you're a project manager, you're going to pay a lot of attention because first you cut them, pull these conductors, make them the same length, cut them at both ends 100 feet each, and then, then pull them inside your conduits. Now you're guaranteed that they are 100 feet each. If there's extra in one side because of the physical location, you pull it somewhere you, inside the panel. Length is very, very important, guys. Otherwise, you're going to end up uh, in, in, in a big trouble. So when you parallel conductors, there's a couple of rules that you have to go to. 
They have to be the same, um, the same length, same material, same size, of course, same installation, and terminated in the same manner. And if they are installed in a conduit, they have to be installed in the same type of conduit, and they cannot be less than four out, a uh, one out. They cannot be less than one out. I do have a picture of a parent conductor in a second. I'll give you guys. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this is just talking about the panel worksheet, guys, for the project that they have here. Um, I'm just going to go over that one. and talks a little bit. This is what it talks about. This is the project that they have in this book and how they enter the calculation for this project. For example, they have your lighting. Look at your general lighting load, the counts, the square foot multiplied by how many square feet from the NBC code book. Then, then your connected load and you choose the largest in the tool. So long story short, this is what we call it, the load calculation that you guys have done with me. Please review this sheet. Um, you've seen it before. This is a load calculation for the project, for the drugstore. We have, it. remember, this book is following a project it's called Drugstore. This will, uh, this is how they come up with the calculation and the size of the feeder at the end right in here. Um, you guys, I, if you are electricians, I'll make you chew this one. Your designers, you already designed a, uh, based on any secret book you designed an excel sheet that goes step by step through that one um, exactly what we did this is just define what the columns in each one of these sheets are and how to come up with the size of the uh, the load calculation size basically and then at the end <coughs> you need to go size your conduits right Anna? you guys have done that with me at the end of it you're going to go size your conduit for this emt conduit um, or rigid or pvc what's not Okay, so that's what I have for you guys about feeders. I do have a couple of pictures I want to share with you. And then, um, okay, this is um, a typical, I, I always, when I teach apprentices guys, and as well as designers, I always say, if you graduate from an electrical program and you don't know the major three circuits, I probably should be a plumber. The major three circuits, guys, that we, we have is circuit number one is called the service, right? Service conductor coming to the panel. Circuit number two is the feeder, and circuit number three is the brand circuit. Every single project that you guys are working on is going to be made out of these three. Service conductors coming from Excel Energy to your building, then feeder is taking that chunk of energy from the main panel into a different location, and then the brand circuit taking this chunk of loads, little chunk of loads, and feeding these equipment, right? What we call them. The NEC code book is, this is Article 230. This one is Article 215, and this is Article 210. Each one of them is an article in the NEC code book. They're all the same, same conductor. I can have one conductor for a THHN that can, or THHW, can be a service conductor, or can be a theater conductor, or can be a brand circuit conductor, depending where it's located. You can see the service bringing the power to the building, the feeder between two panels, and the branch circuit between the overcome picture device and so-called the utilization equipment, the equipment that, that digests electricity. So that's my um, my feeder. This is about the terminals, and you guys have seen this before, probably one of the best. Um, for feeders, guys, the most important thing, the assumption for 100 amp or less, look at that, 100 amp or less, 14 all the way to 1, unless you know otherwise, um, you have, you are to um, stick with the 60 degree column, unless you know otherwise. You can use conductor of 75, no problem, but you still have to stick with a 60 amp ampicity. If you know that the lugs are rated for 75 in both ends, the feeders are 75 or higher, like 75 or 90, then you can, you, then you can size your conductor to 75 degrees. We went through that one. For motors, the code guys allows you for motors of these times to immediately size your conductor base 75 because the motors and the circuit breakers or the fuses have 75, um, 75 rating. Any comments, guys, any questions about the, these rules of the terminals? Unless you know otherwise, 100 amp or less, when you go to the table, where do you go? 60 degree column, unless they tell you otherwise. Very, very important for branch circuit or feeders or what's not. More than 100 amp, you go to 75, the default guys. Granted that you have a conductor rated for 75. Granted that you have a conductor that rated for 75. 
Can I get you guys to look at these, please? I can't emphasize, guys. I have people who graduate. They come to my exam prep, Adam, years after. And they're still confused with this. It's very simple. 100 amp or less, you go to, unless you know otherwise, you're going to go to 60 degree column when you size your conductors. More than 100 amps, 75 degree column. Granted, the conductor is also rated for 75. If you have a motor, by default, it's 75. So that's your ambassador um, table, basically. Okay, harmonics. Look at this ugly picture, guys. Here's um, the sine wave. This is so-called your 60, 60 hertz wave. And this is how your system should be, guys, in order for electricity to work properly. If you have a server, Adam, like that laptop that you're looking at, a server, and you put 100 of them in a building, look what happened to this nice sine shoulder wave, guys. Can you see that? So here's the third harmonic, fifth harmonic, seventh harmonic. Third harmonic, this is 60 hertz. This one, uh, three times 60. This one, five times 60. And this one, seven times 60. Um, and this one is uh, add them all up. What, what, the, what the harmonics are, guys, their power frequencies, their power signals at different frequencies. So the power signal that we have is 60 hertz is what we need. Um, electronic equipment tend to screw up that 60 hertz, right, by adding different frequencies on it. So who cares? Look what happened, Adam, to your nice sinusoidal wave right here. Instead of a nice sinusoidal wave, it just turned into this yellow ugly thing. Who cares? I always ask, who cares? That, <laughs> that will heat your neutral, make your circuit breaker trip, heat, heat and damage your transformer. So the smarter than Chad years ago said, if you have a harmonic problem, we're going to have a key rated transformer. You're going to have double neutral or full neutral or a neutral with every branch circuit. Can I get you guys to understand that one? So, for example, the third harmonic, they call it a third harmonic, is having 100, 3 times 6 is what? 180 hertz. That's the frequency. Um, that's the frequency of this power signal, the frequency of this power signal. Wish I can send you guys to an engineering school and then you can suffer like I suffered with all these frequencies. You think it's really cool. It's a lot of math behind these when you add them up. Okay, but for the time being now, because of all of this, Adam and Derek, my friend, what you end up doing is doubling the neutral size on the data center. Because that ugly, um, that ugly, can you guys see that little, I'm, I'm pulling the yellow one. And instead, look how nice this is compared to that yellow one, you know which will damage your equipment um in order to live with i call it living with the evil um in order to live with the evil which is harmonic you basically oversize things a little bit there's also another way of living with the evil eliminating the evils how do you eliminate an evil by having harmonic filters and this is not the topic for today so what they can do guys they have harmonic filters that grab these signals choke them and eliminate them from affecting other equipments in your building so harmonic is a major, major things that we will continue to talk about it when we go to the commercial. Okay, look what happened if you have a ballast, guys, like the one above your head, the electronic ballast. You have 16 amps going in every phase. <laughs> the neutral will be carrying 16 amps. Unlike in a three-phase system, Matt, I don't know, you haven't done the three-phase system with us yet. In a three-phase system, if you have 16, 16, 16 amps on every phase, the neutral should carry zero, right? That's what the three-phase, the beauty of the three-phase. Neutral will carry no current. In a harmonic, because of the other frequencies, they add up and the neutral will be carrying as much current as the phases. So who cares? That's why when you guys size these, um, typically either we pull a neutral, the engineers like a neutral with every circuit. So what you end up doing is you end up doing one neutral and one neutral for each one of these circuits to eliminate the pass or the possibility of or, of or burning your neutral or you can double the neutral size from number 10, uh, 12 into number 10. pulling the neutral like i said here's that what we do guys most of the engineering if you know that the load is going to be electronic what we do is we we can go directly and pull a neutral every circuit everybody understand why we pull a neutral with every circuit guys if you have a harmonic problem you, your answer would be oops branch circuit one neutral the branch circuit What's wrong with the one neutral with the brand circuit? If you're an electrical contractor, 
that's a lot of money. That's extra two wires, guys, for every branch, three phase branch circuit. So it's a big deal. What's the alternative? Look, this is how we wire the receptacle, guys. In our project, the project that you guys have, your general purpose receptacle were wired in this way, multi-wire branch circuit. Your technology receptacles, Karen, uh, that you wired, they were wired in this way. The technology receptacles, when you read, they ask for a neutral with every circuit. The general purpose receptacle, they were grouped together in a multi-wire branch circuit. Any comments, my friends? Any questions? Comments, questions about that? Any comments, any questions? Everybody knows a multi-wire brand circuit. You use a multi-wire brand circuit if harmonic is not an issue in you. If you have harmonic issues, um, like like receptacle that can feed computers, just pull an extra neutral with every phase. We talked about the voltage drop, guys, here. Um, and we said the voltage drop goes from the feeders into the brand circuits. Um, Parallel. When you parallel circuits, here's what parallel. I think I couldn't find a, a nicer picture than this when you parallel. Here's what you parallel, guys. Uh, paralleling circuits. These are three sets. Can you guys see that? Uh, two sets on every phase. Here is phase A. This is phase B. This is phase C and a neutral. And this is also phase A, phase B, phase C and a neutral. Oops, no, the other way around. This one is phase A. Phase B, phase C, and a neutral. Can you guys see that? And when you parallel conductors, they have to be the same length, the most important thing, the same conductor material, cover aluminum, the same size, circular mill, same insulation, same termination, terminate in the same manner. And I'm going to add, guys, number number six with same conduit. If you put them conduit type, conduit type, and number seven would be you cannot parallel less than one not not less than one not a w g these are the seven rules for parallel conductors seven rules for parallel conductors not less than one not same um, same length same material same termination same insulation same conduit if they're put in a conduit um any comments any questions when would you start paralleling if you load equal 400 amps or more 400 amps or more that becomes your cutoff 500 amp cut them by half 250 and size your conductor i'm going by this is the size of the over current protection device 400 amp, the size of the overcome protection device. You're absolutely right. There's a little difference between the size of the conductor and the size of the overcome protection device. For example, I can have a 380 amp load on um, on a, a 500 kC amp conductor landing on a 400 amp circuit breaker. That's that's the 800 uh, rule. Okay, the rest of them, guys, is just doing calculation. Um, so any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions about this chapter? Any comments, any questions? Yes, no. Please pay attention to the paralleling here. Please, I can't emphasize, guys. We're going to be doing it for next project. We, next project, guys, is going to be a 4,000 amp switch gear. So you need to be pulling 10 runs. Uh, understand the concept of paralleling. Understand the concept of voltage drop and harmonic. That's basically what this is. The load calculation in this chapter, we already did it. So I want to give you guys, um, okay, let's do like uh, 10 minutes, and I'm going to go over one more chapter, please, so I stay on track. The other one is just following a design that we did for the drugstore and uh, an insurance company, insurance office. Thank you.